called uh, Lily Hopewitz. It's uh, a Bear Clan name from the Mohawk Nation. So, what is your um, career, or what, what do you do for a tree too? I don't really know how to answer that question. Uh, I try to, sometimes even for myself, to say what I do, but I really can't. Uh, uh, whatever it is that I do, I'm doing. And I've been doing it now for 56 years, maybe. Uh, and I've done nothing else but that. That's all I've done. Okay, so. Uh, I hope that's okay as an answer, but yep. it's the only answer I, I know how to give you. That's fine. Um, so I just graduated from high school this year. Good. And Good for you. Great. I'm, I'm kind of stuck as to what career path I should take. I want to help the indigenous people as much as I can with whatever issues we're dealing with. Do you have any suggestions on where I should go to do that or what I should do? Well, if I can suggest, I don't want to tell you what to do, but, but I will give you some things to think about. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, you have to continue to prepare yourself. You're still a young man, you're still growing, you're still learning. Uh, and keep at that, uh, get as broad and solid an education as you possibly can. And while you're doing that, you can still help your people. You know, it's not like, oh, I've got to go away to university for X number of years and I won't be helping my people during that time. No, you can be doing that wherever you are whatever you're doing. Okay. So. I, I'd also say to you uh, that uh, uh, the opportunities are, are all over the place, you know, uh, that uh, being yourself is the most important to be true to yourself and uh, to uh, act and to speak out according to the way you feel is right. And there are opportunities all around you. You meet people on the street, you, you see situations, you hear of something, you see opportunities, they surround us. And just, you learn how to do that as you roll. It's, it's not a question of doing a big thing, you know. It's a question of doing what you can do today. You know, you're doing it right now by your interview with me. You're doing it. And uh, keep open to those opportunities. And when you get to be uh, way up there in age, what you've done is an accumulation of day by day, hour by hour, month by month, year by year. It all adds up together. It's not one big thing. Sorry. That was, that was awesome. Thank you. Um, so, I'm concerned about the sovereignty of our people. And I believe you more. What are your thoughts about that, our sovereignty? Uh, okay, I, uh, hear me out here because at first I may sound negative. A sovereignty is a very uh, European concept. A sovereignty means to reign over, like a king. I mean, it's, it's reign sovereign, you know, in Latin. And it means to uh, reign over someone, to tell someone else what to do, to be someone superior. And uh, when Europeans, uh, someone says, I'm king of so-and-so, I'm the sovereign. Uh, someone else says, no, you're not, and they engage in war, they fight it out, decide who's going to be the top dog, and there you go. Uh, First Nations uh, never have thought that way. 
in terms of their families. There's not a, you know, kind of a big boss of the family, the paternalistic uh, kind of thing. Uh, there's not, uh, you know, a structure that's like a pyramid with one guy and then the vice guy and then the assistant vice guys. You know, that kind of a, a, a pyramid. Uh, our, what, what we tend to do whenever we come into a situation is to try to establish a relationship. When, when we see an older person, we, we go over and we introduce ourselves. And that person we see has our, our grandmother or our grandfather. That's what we call them. You, know, you don't need to, to know their name. You just say, oh, it's nice to be here, Grandma. My, you may know my grandmother. She's so-and-so. It's common. And, uh, you, the first thing you do is to try to establish that relationship. And then you, as that person's grandson, behave like a grandson. You ask, are you comfortable? Is there anything I can get you? Or, you know, that's the kind of thing. It's not like, who's the boss here? So this is what happened at the time of treaty. You have one party who comes and says, uh, we're going we're gonna to decide who's top dog here. And the other party, the indigenous party, is saying, who are you? You know, what do you do? How, are, how am I related to you? And so on. And they don't know. So you establish the relationship. Uh, first of all, you want a peaceful relationship. You want friendship. You want reciprocity. Uh, I'll give things to you and you give things to me and we'll help each other out. And won't, that'll be a good relationship, eh? Okay, well, let's sign the treaty call and do that. And that's what, what happened. People did that. There was no intention in treaty ever, which is a bicultural thing. It's not only a bi-nation thing, but it's bicultural, of, of two parties trying to understand each other and to do something. At least that was the First Nation point of view, the indigenous point of view. <coughs> I'm not sure the commissioners on, of the Queen had the same idea, but the First Nations stuck to its cultural uh, tradition, its cultural truths. Okay, well, I'm not sure, or I'm not too aware on how our our government functions now, but do they still operate like that, or has it been more? Um, colonized? Have they adapted the European way of governance? Uh, indigenous people? Yeah. Your community? Yeah. Holy <laughs> man, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the part of the whole problem, you know? You you elect a chief and council pursuant to the Indian Act, you elect a top dog, yeah. you know? Decide who's going to be top dog this year, and then you have a fight amongst the top dogs, and. And here you've got, really in your community in Skowna, you, you've got a, a collection of great-grandparents and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren, and it's, a, it's a families that are living together. It's not the kind of, of uh, government, again, like uh, you find in many parts of the world outside of indigenous people, where there's that kind of a hierarchy thing. Your, your government's a very flat government. And traditionally, your chiefs were the poorest people that were there. They gave away everything they had. You know, they were constantly giving, giving, giving time, money, you know, whatever they had. And as a result, we're poor, and the people valued that, and they supported that, and they would help their chief to do that. You know, it was that kind of... A, if, if you want to really understand what's happened, just turn everything upside down. Everything has gone crazy upside down. And what we got to do is to get it back up right again, so that your human value, whatever it is that told you that you wanted to serve your people, you see, that's got to be supreme in your life. 
uh, we, we've got to get back that kind of government. But when we do, we've got to make sure that it is responsive to our own traditions and not carbon copies of someone else. That was truly important. <laughs> Thank you. I should come over there and give you a big hug. Come on. Come on over here with me. <laughs> We'll do this together. <laughs> Thank you so much.